In the winter of 2022, my partner Fabi and I took a 4,000 kilometer train ride across Turkey. Our trip began on the west coast, where Fabi and I share a house, north to the city of Eskishehir, east through Ankara, and into the heart of the ancient country. Our destination was the city of Kars, near the border with Georgia. The words you are about to hear are taken directly from notes I wrote during the trip. The music was composed and performed by the French electronica duet Invisible Chaos Outside. A grim sunrise greets our first day. The sparse country is bleak. Barren hills, dirt hills, empty, derelict houses with broken glass, scrubby trees devoid of leaves. A fast-moving, muddy creek runs alongside the tracks. It looks cold. The first snow appears in patches in the fields, then high up in the far-off mountains, their peaks bright with distant sunlight. We pass through a tunnel, and the glare of the white mountains is devoured by utter darkness. There is a road now, and the creek has widened. It's a river now. No birds, no green, no people except fellow passengers. We stop occasionally at forlorn stations where there are dogs, the only sign of life outside the train. The snow comes and goes. I see only dirt now, a product of disintegrating mountains. The rocky hillsides are stratified. These were once ocean beds, full of life. The mostly gray mountainsides are dusted with muted color, wine, moss, golden brown. A valley opens up, ringed by high snow-capped mountains. The train sounds its horn longer and more often. We are in the valley. There are bound to be farmers in the fields, but I don't see any. And the fields are barren, brownish-green, the color of dirt. Tall, narrow trees, silver-gray, gather along the river like a phalanx of thin soldiers. Everything is some shade of gray, 50 shades of gray. I see blackbirds now over the fields and the signs of man, cars, buildings, stone walls, debris. We have come to a town, there's a con. We get off the train to stretch our legs, as we have done a few times before in other towns whose names I did not capture or remember. The engineer blasts the horn. It's time to move on. The mountains are truly majestic now, towering, brilliant, covered with snow, lit by the setting sun. Fabi points out a valley in Burgundy. She says, we are lucky the snow has mostly melted or we would not see the colors. She is right. My barn burned down. Now I can see the moon. We eat crusty bread, the last of our cheese, chocolate, nuts, and dried persimmons we bought in Eskishihir. We discreetly pour red wine into plastic cups from a bottle wrapped in brown paper. I have no signal on my phone, a welcome but temporary detachment from the chaotic world beyond. Night passes. Morning. I spy an eagle with broad black wings drifting over the ever-present river, which I discover is the ancient Euphrates. It flows south through Syria and Iraq and empties into the Persian Gulf. Now it flows beside our train. The land is rocky with steep canyons falling to the river's broad waters. A new color appears, 
slate blue. Bare tree limbs glow orange with spring buds, God's annual gift of hope. The colors of the sheep mirror those of the earth, black, chocolate brown, dirty white, buff. Fabi makes coffee from a packet of Nescafe by shaking it with cold water in a plastic bottle. I watch the countryside. There is mining and a dam. The hillsides are carved into steps by giant machines. Whatever is valuable is mounded in ugly pewter gray piles. Everything seems broken, tumbling, scarred, harsh. It is hard to find beauty here, but it is here. The sheep, the mountains, the snow, the colors, man. We stop again for a train passing in the other direction. The engineers exchange greetings and smiles from their open windows. The passengers wave as they pass by. The train creaks and hisses, occasionally snorting huge blasts of compressed air like a sneezing dragon. A family is playing with their baby who makes squeaky noises, squeaks and snorts. The train rumbles on. We are bored, so we wander to another car. Turkish music is playing, and a man dances in the aisle. He invites us to join him, so we do. Am I an American puppet in a puppet show, or is it something real? I don't know. We dance. A bank of powder gray clouds loom over the white mountains, obscuring their peaks. The setting sun casts shadows on the sloping shoulders of the foothills. In the shadowed valleys, the land turns haunted, evil, repellent. The trees are all black now, eerie. There is no sun to illuminate their merry red twigs. The river appears icy cold. Chunks of frozen water float in the dammed lakes. If the train were to break down here, it would be a long, hard, cold hike out. Where is the river now? I can no longer see it from the train. In Bible prophecy, the sixth angel of the apocalypse dries up the Euphrates' great waters. It is one of the opening salvos of Armageddon, the great battle that heralds the end of the world. The Russians have just invaded Ukraine, about 1,000 kilometers to our north as the crow flies and across the Black Sea. I find a pained letter from a Russian friend on my phone. He and his wife live in Siberia. He is anguished. They have a young son. I try to cheer him, but it is hard to know what to say. There is talk of World War III. A lone set of footprints cuts through the old snow, blue in the twilight, across a field and toward the mountains. Where was he going? Night has fallen. Electric lights sprinkle across a hillside in the distance. We will soon be in cars. <laughs>